Hey guys, it's Aman here. Uh, it's been a while since I created a new video and honestly, it's difficult to think about ideas. Uh, good ideas, to be honest. Uh, and I decided why not just create a, a video and a project that I've been working for myself. Uh, life updates, I recently moved to a new country. It's been a while, uh, it's been two years since I moved to Canada. And one thing I've been really, really, really struggling at is my personal finances. Uh, honestly, I'm not broke yet, so that's a good sign. But it's just difficult to gain uh, insights on my spending habits. And I've tried those apps where you kind of have to give your banking credentials, but I, I uh, honestly, that's not for me. I don't really trust those apps. Uh, uh, coming from a software engineering background, you know what can happen if that thing's Honestly, it's just tough to, tough to trust those apps. Uh, don't really know if uh, some engineer behind the scene can access my password. Uh, I hope not, but yeah, I'm not going to take that risk. So what's the best thing that we can, I was able to think of? And honestly, banks kind of gives you these. Uh, well, honestly, these are hard copies, but they kind of also gives you PDFs, which I thought I could use that to using AI and why not gain insights for myself? So let's just jump into the video. So the initial idea was uh, have some sort of PDF and have a Python script that reads and extracts data from the PDF and stores in some sort of database. Honestly, I thought how difficult a reading a PDF will be, but apparently PDFs are way complicated than it looks. Uh, it's not as simple as just uh, selecting some tags. They are made of complicated shapes. And honestly, uh, each bank's PDF is, will be different. And if they change their statement, reading a PDF will not be scalable. Uh, every time I have to look for a bank to see how their PDF is, write a script or a parser to read that PDF, extract the information I need, and honestly, not all the banks might create good PDF or for good formatted PDF in the structure that I can read. So this approach uh, didn't scale well, so I gave up. I gave up on reading the PDF and extracting data from that. And I thought, what else can I do? And I looked towards AI. Uh, AI is being so trendy, so I thought, why not just throw in PDFs into AI and just see if it can extract JSON as in that way I can store that in my database. So the approach now is uh, take the PDF, pass it to an LLM, and hope it extracts data for me correctly. Uh, again, I want to extract the transactions in the document. Uh, that's what I'm really interested in, doing a transactional analysis on where I'm spending the money. Uh, so let's try to experiment. So the initial idea is let's just try uploading the PDF to OpenAI uh, or, or some sort of LLM and see, let's see if we can extract the transaction just based on prompt itself. And here, what I'm doing is I just uploaded the PDFs here already. Uh, and I have a prompt with me that I'm just gonna copy paste for myself. And I'm gonna pass this prompt and Basically, in the prompt, what I'm doing here is I'm just asking uh, the LLM to, here's my credit card statement, uh, and extract all these into a JSON format, and I have explained what each field means in the JSON, uh, and what kind of output that field should have. And I'm just going to hedge. And if you can see, it's 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 pretty accurate. Um, it's able to get the job done for this credit card statement. So... Uh, the approach seemed uh, to work fine. We were able to extract the transactions, but I immediately hit a wall. And uh, the reason was uh, we saw in the UI that we were using a reasoning model. And uh, apparently the reasoning model is very good at doing that extraction tasks from the data source. But one thing that came into the mind was the cost so the cost per token for that reasoning model for Rho is very high. And being uh, in the future, if I decide to make this, let's say, a SaaS app, the problem with that will be that the cost to extract the JSON will, uh, sorry, the cost to extract the JSON from the PDF itself will be too high. Uh, so that's something I kind of wanted to consider. 
Now, I tried the other models like the 4 Mini or GPT-4. They were pretty reasonable, but they were not be as accurate as the reasoning model for all. So I kind of had to think this through. And the next best thing I was able to think of is I'll um, themselves work on texts. They can't really understand PDF by themselves. So what about I just copy the whole text into a GPT-4 model? and ask the four model to give me a JSON. Now this approach worked, but it wasn't really accurate 100% uh, of the time. And also sometimes I just saw our irregularities between the extractions, which cause, which will cause any concern. We, can, we kind of want to be accurate as well here. So the next thing uh, I tried was I kind of tried preserving the formatting of the text because when I copied as is from the PDF and when I paste it manually in the UI, it doesn't really format, uh, preserve the formatting of the text. And apparently LLM, when you preserve the formatting, they, they read documents kind of like humans. So the well formatted that it'll be, the more uh, organized uh, AI or LLM will be able to extract information from those. So I kind of wanted a tool to figure out how can I preserve that formatting from the PDF. So converted some sort of like a markdown file and I can pass that markdown file to the LLM can do the operations on. And that's where I came into Llama Cloud. And Llama Cloud is a service that takes your PDF and converts them into a text-based uh, markdowns or simple text well-formatted text that you can pass it to LLM. And it's really good for rag-based systems where you take your PDF, convert that into your knowledge base and pass it to rag. But uh, at right now, my use case is just take that, convert that into a text-based readme. And from there, we will try to extract just based on GPT-4 models, not the reasoning model, because they are a bit expensive. And uh, so let's try that. So here I have stitched everything together, uh, whatever we discovered before. What I'm doing here is I created a notebook to take the PDF, pass it to the Llama Cloud, and get that formatted text, and then pass that back to OpenAI GPT-4 model. I think right now I'm using GPT-4 Nano because it's the cheapest, and uh, ideally I have experimented before uh, while I'm presenting this video, and it worked. Well, you can always try out other models too. And again, based on the cost and the use case that you have, can differ. But uh, for, I think for o Nano, sorry, GPT-4 Nano or GPT-4, both model works absolutely fine. And all I've did here is uh, in this notebook, we quickly have a look. Uh, I am interacting with Llama parts with the Llama Cloud SDK. And I'm using Langchain to interact with the uh, AI models. Uh, I'll simply load these. Uh, and this is the main uh, uh, model here. I'm using Pydantic to define and create my prompt dynamically. So all I, instead of writing my own manual prompt, defining JSON and what to extract, Pydantic gives you a cool feature where you can define the fields and have a description to these fields and tell the, and again, at the end, you can extract a prompt out of Pydantic itself. Again, in this case, you're not owning the prompt. Uh, Pydantic will create, a, I think, a base structure. If you see this comment part, uh, it's going to combine these uh, descriptions for each field and going to give you an aggregated prompt. And all you have to do is pass that JSON to text data and this prompt to the LLM model and get the structured data out. Uh, and that's, that's again, that's the Pydantic. You can always do it manually. Uh, I felt like Pydantic implemented it really well. And uh, I don't really have to do a lot of work by manually for, for formatting text myself. And if you see, I have right now, I'm doing credit card statement. Uh, this is my base model and I'm extracting first name, last name, and a lot of uh, uh, information here. And also the transaction details that I am trying to extract. Uh, Again, I did. I went ahead and implemented it for checking comments too, uh, but uh, again, uh, 
it's up to you what you want to use it. If you want to use it for credit card analysis, uh, one model should be good enough. Uh, but right now, this code supports both. And the main logic here is it has a PDF extractor. Basically, the PDF extractor is the component that calls Llama parse and gets the text of the PDF. Uh, so if you see extract text and you pass a PDF path, and it's just going to call Llama parse and check if it has a property of text and get you the text back. Uh, and uh, here I am doing as uh, implementing my processors. Again, uh, I have did as I kind of uh, made this code production ready itself, where I'm trying to do is create different sort of processors. And again, it can be of different types. If you see, I have a credit card processor. I also have a bank account processor. And here's my prompt template. This is what uh, the uh, will be passed to GPD-4 for it to extract the text. And in this case, I can create n number of parsers and I can scale my app to any number of statement types that I want to extract, not just credit card. In future, if I want to do investment accounts, I can easily do that with this by just extending it to a new class. And this is where the Pydantic will fill in uh, the format instructions. Uh, it's a placeholder text, and this is what the Pydantic will give you. It'll give you that formatted JSON that LLM will understand and try to extract it. And this is where your statement text goes. Uh, that's where the Lama parse text will read out. And uh, everything uh, you saw up is just coordinated here in the pipeline. And all this pipeline does is it takes a statement and processes that statement and just gets you a, an object back um, uh, and structured data. Now, again, if you see get processor, it takes a statement type. Uh, here, statement type is can be credit card, debit, uh, sorry, credit card, checking accounts, uh, and so. And based on that, it picks the processor class. Uh, think of it like a factory uh, that it returns. And here, uh, based on what you pass as a statement type, it picks the appropriate statement parser, uh, processor, sorry, and then just gets to the data. So uh, I'm gonna do is just run this pipeline uh, quickly. And in this case, uh, it's just gonna execute everything and gonna take some time a little bit. So just gonna skip to the part when it's done. So it's done. Uh, we are able to get uh, it processed and I, I can now go ahead and I'm gonna extract all the properties into a JSON file so that we can read through what exactly is happening. And I'm just gonna run this. Now it's gonna create a structured data dot JSON, and this is uh, mm -hmm. all the information that is able to extract. Uh, obviously, you can see it's not accurate for four O, uh, as accurate as four uh, O with the reasoning model. The Nano is not again based on use case. You can try out different models, see if that works for you. But overall, uh, this is what. Uh, the output looks like and again I can store this in JSON it's it's well accurate I compared this with the actual statement and uh, it, it worked really fine I'm able to get most of the details out obviously I've blurred it on the screen so again show my PII but overall uh, this is what you'll get and again all you have to do is modify to use case uh, and just update the uh, fields that you want from the use case that you have you can implement different type of parsers but overall all I can do now is take this save this in a database and do analysis on top but so this video is getting too long and uh, I don't really want to dense back all the information at once so in this be a uh, part we learned how to take a PDF and do an extraction uh, on top so and so I think for, for, if you try to compare this, this is more of like a data collection project uh, verse uh, instead of hum a human manually extracting from the PDF, uh, an AI can do it more accurately. Uh, again, this approach can work for 
any number of uh, statement format. It doesn't have to be bank specific now because uh, we're using uh, a LLM to extract source information instead of just writing scripts. For so this approach really scales well. So uh, stick around uh, to give this video a like and uh, subscribe if, uh, for uh, the next video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to try to understand uh, how we can gain insights of this data from uh, an LLM point of perspective. I think we're going to try writing some agents and hook up uh, this data that we just extracted using an MCB server. So uh, do give it a like, subscribe, and see you guys in the next video.